Hey everyone, Greg Staley from Diverge Media. I know tonight we had promised at 7 p.m. Uh, our interview with a paralegal. Now we are working on verifying the information before we release that. Uh, we don't want to release anything we're not 100% sure of. So we are just double checking and making sure that we have everything properly lined up because we're trying to include the different parts that were spoke about and source them directly into the video. So in the meantime, uh, we're deciding, we've decided to bring you a broadcast talking about the Roman uh, Babber Chronicles. So maybe you haven't heard about Roman Babber, but he is a now independent MPP who was kicked out of Doug Ford's PC party for daring to ask uh, or to write a letter rather about what is going on with COVID. And he sourced everything factually and Basically, the premier said he uh, was kicked for misinformation, but didn't cite any of the misinformation. And then the next day, he was supported by the former chief medical officer of Ontario, Dr. Richard Shabas. So here we go. We're going to pull up a couple of articles we've written about uh, Roman Babber, and we'll go into his letter, and we'll go into uh, a little bit more about uh, what was said as well. Okay. So it took just under three hours for Roman Babber, the MPP for York Center, to be removed from the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario after releasing his letter to Premier Ford recommending an end to lockdowns in the province. Roman Babber released the letter today recommending the following as an exit strategy back to normal life. End the lockdown and let Ontarians go back to normal life. That's the best thing for their health. Focus on long-term care and proper IPAC instead of imprisoning 15 million Ontarians. With vaccinations of all LTC, long-term care residents, in Ontario's red zones by January 21st, there's much less justification for the lockdown. Build additional hospital capacity, such as the facility at Joseph Brandt, and train ICU nurses. Restore health care by ending emergency protocols, accept long-term care, and Ontarians need health care back. End the spread of fear and panic. It's unjustified and causes considerable stress, especially on children. The letter also had a section titled Lockdown vs. COVID. It reads, Hot zones like Toronto and Peel have been in lockdown since Thanksgiving without success. COVID is real, but the fear of COVID is exaggerated. While every death is tragic, after 10 months, we learn that COVID is not nearly as deadly as first thought. It has a 99.8% survival rate. According to the CDC's latest estimate, COVID's fatality rate by age is as follows. 0 to 19, 0.00003%. 20 to 49, 0.0002%. Uh, 50 to 69, 0.005%. 70 plus 0.054%. The letter continues. Regretfully, regretfully, since the start of the pandemic, about 5,000 Ontarios have died from slash with COVID. Approximately 80% of all COVID deaths occurred in group living setting, settings. Of all 5,000 deaths, over 3,000 died in long-term care, where victims on average were in the last year of life. We should focus on and fix long-term care. Approximately 3,500, or 70%, of all Ontarians who died were over the age of 80. While we mourn every death, only 200 people, or 4%, were under age 60, and zero children died from COVID-19 in Ontario. The letter also addressed ICU occupancy. In December of 2017, ICU occupancy was at 94.5%, 2018, 94.8%, 2019, 95%. In December of 2020, however, it actually dropped to 84.4%, and most recently, as of January 5th, when the letter was written, was 87.6% of ICU occupancy. Mr. Babber wrote, Ontario's hospital capacity is better than pre-pandemic. The lockdown is having catastrophic effects on Ontario's children. Mr. Babber indicated that his constituents have been calling him to tell him that lockdowns have caused their children to develop anxiety. Quote, we are scaring children even though they are 100% safe, Mr. Babber wrote. Mr. Babber also advised the Ford government to follow sick kids' hospitals' advice against mandatory masking for children in schools. He said, quote, Premier, we should stop scaring children. This generation of kids will grow up with an anxiety disorder and will be afraid of normal life. Kids need to be kids again back in school with their friends. They should not believe that coming too close to another child could result in someone's death. It's false and unwarranted, wrote Mr. Babber. 
Uh, Mr. Babber wrote on the artificial lack of capacity in ICUs. Uh, he wrote, the lack of capacity is created artificially by rationing healthcare resources in response to modeling by the command table. Except the table's modeling is almost always wrong. He continued, the first projection was made in the fall prep plan. On September 30th, the table warned us in Ontario maintained Michigan's case trajectory. By the end of October, we will have over 250 patients in ICU. Although Ontario maintained Michigan's case trajectory, the actual number of patients on October 31st was 73, or 3.5 times less than predicted. We agree with Mr. Babber when he said, The medicine is killing the patient. Ontario's hospital and ICU capacity are better than the last three years. It's time to end lockdowns and stop hurting Ontario's, Ontarians, Premier. It is time to end the charade and come clean about your government's mishandling of COVID. Maybe if you do, you can still save face with your voters. Only 16% of ICU are occupied by COVID patients. According to the letter, as of January 4, 2021, the ICU occupancy rate was 80.6%, with COVID responsible for just 16% of the 80.6% of those beds that are occupied in ICU. Quote, urban area hospitals are always at capacity this time of year, Mr. Babber said. That's why we campaigned on ending hallway medicine. Lockdowns versus COVID. Mr. Babber gave examples uh, in his letter of lockdown versus COVID. Here's what he had to say. A, cancer screenings at Princess Margaret are back to 60% with oncologists fearing a tsunami of cancer. B, Ontario's overdose rate is trending 50% above normal. The growth of Ontarians who died of overdose in 2020 may be higher than the number of people who died from COVID outside of long-term care. According to the Canadian Mental Health Association, in September 2020, 10% of adults reported recent thoughts or feelings of suicide. That is four times the normal amount. Among Canadians aged 19 to 35, the rate was 20%. D. Sick kids is calling the increase in eating disorders in young people an unprecedented crisis. E. Tens of thousands of businesses have shut down. The unemployment rate is near double and 320,000 have not regained work. We are faced with a catastrophic wave of bankruptcies and foreclosures. And F. The government is criticizing normal human behavior and putting law-abiding citizens in legal jeopardy. Public health can't change human behavior. My heart breaks for the family of Damien Moses. Ours as well, Mr. Babber. So, on to what the update has been since then after the support of the former Chief Medical Officer Dr. Richard Shabas spoke out in a letter to Premier Ford in support of MPP Roman Babber. The MPP who called on Ford to end the lockdowns has insisted on a public conversation supported by facts and a fair medical narrative and has received a retweet from the Chief Medical Officer of Ontario, the former Chief Medical Officer of Ontario, Richard Chavez. In his letter to the Premier, he wrote the following, Dear Premier Ford, I served as Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health from 1987 to 1997. I helped train many current medical officers, including Dr. Williams, and was chief of staff at York Central Hospital during the 2003 SARS crisis. Sounds like he may be qualified to give his opinion on the matter. He continues, On January 15, 2021, MPP Roman Babber sent you a public letter calling on your government to change course on COVID. MPP Babber made five key points, and I believe was correct on all five items. First, Reasonable estimates of the infection fatality rate, IFR, from COVID have been declining as we learn more. Outside of long-term care, the risk of dying if you are infected with COVID is probably less than 0.2% overall, and deaths are concentrated in the frail and elderly. Younger people and healthy people have a much lower risk. Models that predicted hundreds of thousands of deaths from COVID in Canada were badly wrong because they used incorrect exaggerated inputs. Second, the lockdown was never part of our planned pandemic response, nor is it supported by strong science. Lockdown has been used by almost every developed country in the great majority of cases. The lack of response speaks for itself. Two recent studies on the effectiveness of lockdown show that it has uh, that it has at most a small COVID mortality benefit compared to more moderate measures. Both studies warn about the excessive cost of lockdown. Third, there are significant costs to lockdowns. Lost education, 
unemployment, social isolation, deteriorating mental health, and compromised access to health care. Lockdown is an affront to social justice because it burdens fall disproportionately on the young, the working poor, and a visible minority. We will be uh, invisible minorities. We will be paying for lockdowns in lives and dollars for decades to come. Fourth, in April, the government announced that they had added almost 1,500 critical care beds to cope with a COVID surge. Now, after nine months of COVID, why do we have less ICU capacity than we had last April? Fifth, the government has resorted to fear-mongering to encourage compliance with lockdown. An excellent example is in the government's response to Mr. Haber's letter. Uh, Mr. Baber's letter, instead of addressing his point about COVID IFR infe infection fatality rate, the government cited COVID's reported case fatality rate. Every knowledgeable observer of COVID understands that CFR is in itself an irrelevant number. IFR is the meaningful measure of virulence. CFR's only virtue is the ability to frighten, to frighten by overstating the real risk of dying from a COVID infection. I can think of no other reason for the government to incite CFR except to promote fear. Those are the words of former Chief Medical Officer Dr. Richard Shabas in support of independent, now independent MP, P, Roman Baber. Or Baber, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. I apologize if I've uh, mispronunci uh, mispronunciated your name. So I uh, want to touch on one more thing, which is another expert that has recently spoken out. So this was, this was shared on our page, but was posted in the Calgary Herald. It reads, Corbella, emergency experts say we should quarantine care homes and open society. Governments took every emergency pandemic plan they'd ever written and threw them out the window when COVID arrived. That are these are the words of emergency management expert David Redman. Here, governments took every emergency pandemic plan they'd ever written and threw them out the window when COVID arrived, said Redman. No one followed the process, even though they had plenty of time and forewarning, as we had the benefit of seeing what was happening in China, Italy, Spain, and France before the virus hit in March of 2020. Instead, they panicked, started flying by the seat of their pants, and put doctors in charge. Redmond was so alarmed with Canada's pandemic response in April, he wrote a three-page letter to Premier Jason Kenney saying, uh, quote, I am genuinely concerned by the GOA response to this pandemic. It appears that we have scrapped the pandemic influenza support plan, started from scratch, and decided to ignore all principles of emergency management. To say that Redmond knows what he's talking about is putting things mildly. He has been to war and led troops in the former Yugoslavia. He was in charge of closing down, uh, in charge of closing down Canada's army base in Lahr, Germany, in the early 1990s. He did such a great job of closing down that small city of 18,000 troops, their families, equipment, and 940 pieces of infrastructure, including the fourth largest, longest runway in Europe. That two years later he was deployed to Croatia and Bosnia to lead the unplanned withdrawal. Under the orders of Prime Minister Jean Chrétien of Canada's United Nations troops from the area, only to be charged again to establish the staging basis to bring the Canadian Brigade structure back to the area, this time under NATO command. Quote, Pandemics happen continuously, he points out. A pandemic, even an unknown and tricky one like COVID-19, is not a public health emergency, Redmond insists. It's a it's a public emergency since all society are affected, the public sector, private sector, not-for-profit, and every citizen. Redmond says putting doctors in charge of a public emergency is the wrong approach. He points to forest fires, for example. In Alberta, during a forest fire, forest fire like the one that burned down swaths of the city of Fort McMurray in May 2016, the Wildfire Operations Center was the subject matter agency, but it did not lead the provincial government's response to the wildfire. Their job is to fight the fire. Their job was to ensure that there was food and water. Their job was not to evac. Uh, their job was not to evacuate the citizens of Fort McMurray. AEMA leads the cross-government, private sector, and municipal response. We can't keep doing this, Redmond said. Locking down our whole si society. We don't have four hundred billion dollars. We don't have four hundred billion more dollars to tell healthy people to lock themselves in their houses and not go to work. So just a few experts, but I think it's relevant as they've been echoing 
what Diverge Media has been saying in our articles for quite some time. It feels good to be vindicated, but none of this really matters because what I've realized is that the mainstream media is, after it got too much attention, seemingly just one and done with the article, although this should be changing the narrative. We've had two experts and an MPP come forward and tell us that the narrative is incorrect, that our approach is incorrect. One was a former chief medical officer of Ontario and is an extremely qualified individual to give his opinion on the matter. And are we to just dismiss it? He supported the MPP, Roman Baber, that Doug Ford, the premier of Ontario, released from his party for, quote, giving out misinformation. Now, that is an unacceptable thing. Now, it's been backed by the former chief medical officer of Ontario, and they've come out in support of that MPP. And they are saying that we are taking the wrong approach, that the case fatality rate is drastically inflated compared to the infection fatality rate. And ignoring this will not simply make it go away. It is the job of the citizens to continue to push out stories like this. You can share videos like ours, you can share our articles, and other ones like it. Ensure that this doesn't go by the wayside. This is enough to change the entire narrative. We have experts that have been coming forward for some time, but these are big developments. And if you haven't heard about them, there's a reason for that, because it's not making the rounds as much as it needs to. Let's make sure every Canadian hears this. Let's make sure every individual that needs to hear this information gets that information, because it's not going to happen through the government. It's not going to happen through any MPPs or MPs. As we see what's happening in Ontario with Premier Ford, if you speak out or you don't fall in line with the party lines, you're likely not going to be a part of the party much longer. I'm Greg Staley from Diverge Media. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you on Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern.